Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie. And in this video, I'm going to look at the week starting on Monday, January the 15th, 2024. And this week runs through until Sunday, January the 21st, uh, 2024. So as far as the structure of this video is concerned, I'm going to start by looking at the week's main astrological events. Um, I think that the most important astrological event uh, comes right at the end of a week when Pluto moves into Aquarius, and I will be discussing that. Once I've done that, I'm going to consider how the week's astrological events may affect certain famous people. Uh, for example, King Charles III of Britain, uh, I think he might be impacted by Pluto's movement into Aquarius. So I'll be looking at his horoscope. I'll be looking at uh, other people's horoscopes. I'll be looking at the horoscope of uh, Nikki Haley, for example, the one of the candidates for the Republican nomination. I think Pluto is starting to have a big influence um, on her. I'll also be looking at Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk. I don't think he's got Pluto problems at the moment, but uh, he might have Uranus problems, and I will be, yeah, I will be looking at, um, at that. So there'll be, other, there'll be a few other people I'll be looking at. Um, I also want to look at the chart of England. Um, I think that uh, Pluto is having an impact on... England and by extension the United Kingdom. Um, So that is um, something to consider. Um, Having done that, I'm going to switch to the I Ching and I'm going to look at uh, what the week's going to be like from the perspective of the I Ching, how all the people watching this video, all of you watching this video, are going to be impacted. Now, I should make it clear that if you do not want an I Ching reading, that's fine. Um, When I come to the part of a video um, relating to the I Ching, you can just watch something else or watch nothing at all. Um, Because when I do a forecast, it's essential that uh, only only willing participants um, are involved. And if you don't hear my forecast, my forecast doesn't mean anything. It has no impact on you at all. It's 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 not your forecast. So I think it's just very important to um, make that clear. So um, we will start by looking at the positions of the planets at the beginning of the week. Top right, that's uh, King Charles III. Um, so we're looking at uh, the week and how it starts. Um, so this is a position... Um, set for New York, Um, midnight, Monday, January the 15th, uh, 2024. I think it's actually a holiday in in the United States because, uh, yeah, it's um, Martin Luther King's birthday. Um, I will not be talking about Martin Luther King today. I think I might talk about him on Monday. And I want to look at him and a couple of other people who were born on January the 15th. You know, um, Edward Teller is born on January the 15th. Um, he was he, he developed the, uh, I think it's called the Teller-Ulam device. Uh, that's a hydrogen bomb. And he was a, a big advocate of... Um, uh, nuclear armament. Um, I think he might have actually influenced um, Doctor S- Doctor Strangelove. You know, was um, one of the characters in Doctor Strangelove may have been based on him. But yeah, I'll be looking at Edward uh, Teller. He's he is certainly interesting, but not today. I'll be doing that on Monday. Um, so what what's going on this week? Well, over the weekend. Mercury moved into Capricorn. So obviously Mercury is still in Capricorn. Mercury is right at the beginning of Capricorn. Um, This week is, in some respects, going to be quite grounded um, because 
Mercury's movement in Capricorn. You know, now we have Mercury in Capricorn. We now have Mars in Capricorn. We have the Sun in Capricorn. And yes, we've got the Pluto, Pluto in Capricorn. At least we've got Pluto in Capricorn until the very end of the week. Um, so Capricorn kind of dominates proceedings. Um, you know, many of us are going to be focused on our ambitions um, we're going to want to get things done in a methodical way and you know we're going to try to uh, want to try to avoid time wasting activities you know capricorns don't like wasting time they like to to focus on what needs to be done um, and not get involved in um, in trivialities so you can see um Mercury in Capricorn, right up here. And Mercury is moving towards a sesquiquadrate to Uranus. And that sesquiquadrate becomes exact on um, on Wednesday, Wednesday the 17th. So when you've got Mercury, sesquiquadrate, Uranus, there could be a bit of craziness. Um, I know I've just said that Capricorn is a very sort of stable sign, stable down to earth sign. Um, but people might have different interpretations of what it means to be down to earth. Um, so, you know, there you've got Mercury trying to sort everything out. But then it, this aspect with Uranus could create um, disturbances. Um, people having different ideas about the way things should be done. Um, and even even within ourselves, um, there could be some complications. You know, we might want to say something very sensible. Um, it sounds obvious, but as soon as the words come out of our mouth, they just get jumbled up and we kind of say something we weren't planning on saying. You know, Mercury is the communication planet. If it's, if it's sesquiquadrate Uranus, um, the planet of revolutions, um, then our communications and the things we say and write could have um, huge, a huge impact um, way beyond what we expected. Um, and we might find that we've caused a lot of trouble with, without really realizing what we were doing. So um, bear that in mind. And if you're doing any th thinking on Wednesday, you know, you're thinking about something, you're trying to be very sensible about it. Um, but there might be a sudden realization like, hold on, this isn't right. Um, this isn't going to work out. And then there might be a moment where you have to completely change everything. So um, consider that consider that possibility. Though I'm not saying that it's this um, revolutionary spirit is going to continue for very long. Um, by Thursday, uh, Mercury has moved away from that sesquiquadrate to Uranus and Mercury is making a sextile to Saturn. You see there's Saturn in Pisces. So when Mercury gets to about four or five Capricorn, it makes that sextile. And that aspect is, in many respects, very benign. Um, it allows us to focus on one subject, perhaps two subjects, uh, to be sensible, to um, ignore irrelevant detail, and yeah, I mean it's boring, but we can do some do some good work, hard work. We can focus on the things that matter, and uh, yeah, accomplish a great deal. It's not certainly not sp spectacular. Uh, we might not even get any praise. This is about doing things which are not noticed, at least in a short term, but which nonetheless are essential. So then we start moving into the weekend, uh, weekend of 20th and the 21st. Um, that is when the action really starts um, because you can see that, uh, you can see the sun is, um, the sun is getting very close to Pluto. And so 
as the week progresses, the sun gets closer and closer to Pluto. And I think we're going to feel that, you know, a sun-Pluto conjunction um, is, um, is powerful. It's about the quest for power um, in some people. Indeed, with the Sun Pluto conjunction can work in very different ways depending on who you are. One way the Sun Pluto conjunction can work is about um, you know being powerful, being manipulative, doing whatever it takes to get our way. Another way the Sun Pluto conjunction can work is um, Pluto hides things. Some of us may just not want to reveal our true selves. We may not actually be interested in power. Uh, and in fact, that might be the last thing we want. We just want to keep a low profile. We just don't want anyone to notice us. So you can see how the Sun-Pluto conjunction can work in two really very contradictory ways. Though I suppose it's possible that we might not want to be noticed we want to keep a low profile, but we still want to be powerful. And so maybe some of us, you know, if we're really clever, can find ways of manipulating um, the world around us, but in such a way that um, no one notices. So that is a possible manifestation um, of um, a Sun conjunct Pluto. So um, on Saturday, the Sun and Pluto, it comes together. Um, and so, you know, we have to consider who we are, what kind of person we are. Are we looking for power or are we looking for privacy? Or perhaps um, we are looking for both. And the moment the sun makes the conjunction to Pluto, the moment it finishes making the conjunction to Pluto, it straight away changes sign. It moves into Aquarius. So Saturday, uh, Sun makes the conjunction to Pluto, then it moves into Aquarius. Um, that, uh, in some respects, um, is an important change. Um, though Capricorn and Aquarius are two signs that are both ruled by Saturn. Yeah, I know some people think um, Aquarius is ruled by, Aquari by, a, by Uranus, but it's not. Um, Aquarius and Saturn, Aquarius and Capricorn, both ruled by Saturn. Um, so with, uh, with the Sun in Capricorn, it is Saturnine, but it's, it's, it, it is about um, trying to hold what we've got, trying to maintain control over, over, in many respects, what we control already, and we don't really want to just lose anything. Sun going into Aquarius is a bit more active. You know, Aquarius is a positive sign. Capricorn is a negative sign. Um, we might be thinking about how we can extend control um, beyond um, um, our immediate sphere. Or maybe it's other people thinking that they want to extend control. Um, you know, we must remember when we're talking about the sign Aquarius um, that Aquarius it's not really about um, excitement and liberation and um, idealism. You know, it's not it's not as happy as some people make it out to be. Um, Aquarius is a sign related to totalitarianism. Uh, you can easily connect Aquarius with with fascism or communism, for example. Uh, Aquarius can be about the power of the state, um, the active power of the state, um, people wanting to control our lives, um, perhaps using technology. Um, you know, classic example of an Aquarian organization was Nazi Germany. Um, Hitler came to power on January the 30th, 1933, when the sun yeah, when the sun was in Aquarius. Um, so bear that in mind uh, when you see uh, the sun going into it, sun going into Aquarius. Uh, Aquarius is also about revolution. Uh, not everyone is going to like the government trying to control our lives, and there can be a sort of a pushback against that. So 
that's perhaps a theme that we might start to feel as the sun moves into Aquarius, particularly now, you know, around the world. We're in fairly revolutionary um, circumstances. You know, a lot of in a lot of countries, there's a lot of unrest, and I think um, the the sun in Aquarius is going to really sort of emphasise that. You know, governments um, wanting to stay in control and of course extend their control um, so you have this this sun pluto conjunction on um on saturday and then on sunday pluto moves into aquarius now i'm not saying that on sunday itself you're suddenly going to think hey pluto's in into aquarius in Aquarius, everything's changed. It, it, Pluto is a bit more gradual than that. Um, Pluto, remember, is a very small planet. Uh, in fact, it's astronomers regard it as being a dwarf planet. Um, and so its influence is not immediately, uh, not immediately clear. Um, doesn't doesn't seem to be about anything i mean i i suppose you could say you know like pluto um pluto the 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 metal that pluto rules is plutonium um pluto plutonium is a metal um that uh, a very small amount of this metal can cause a huge amount of damage whether that's a small core of plutonium um, which is um, turned into an atomic bomb or the tiny tiny um, particles of plutonium measured in probably fractions of a microgram that if inhaled can potentially cause cancer decades later so you know we shouldn't expect um, Pluto to um, Pluto into in Pluto in Aquarius to have an immediate impact in most cases though i think um you know there are certain people who may be immediately impacted um by by this um, sign change now i really want to do a separate video video on pluto in aquarius and i should say one thing about pluto in aquarius um Although Pluto does move into Aquarius on Sunday, Sunday the 21st, it is not its final movement into Aquarius because at the beginning of September, Pluto actually moves out of Aquarius and goes back into Capricorn. And it stays out of Capricorn until, um, I think, November the 19th. Then so November the 19th, that's the day before Joe Biden's birthday. I'm sure that's not relevant, but uh, um, but yeah, November the nineteenth, Pluto finally makes its move into Aquarius, and I think after that it stays in Aquarius for a long time. Um, so that is uh, that's something to look forward to. But we shouldn't regard um, Pluto's movement into Aquarius on Sunday as being the final movement is not the final movement. Actually, the final movement into Aquarius um, is in November, November the 19th. Um, okay, so who might be influenced by um, Pluto going into Aquarius? Um, one person uh, might be um, King Charles. Um, in fact, there are a few things going on in his life um, which may be a bit difficult. Um, so the thing about Charles is you can see that he has got his moon at 0 026, um, 0 026 Taurus. So uh, the moment Pluto moves into Aquarius, um, it... Um, it makes a square to his moon. And um, there are a sort of number of ways of looking at it. Do we, re do we regard Pluto's square moon as something personal to Prince Charles, to, sorry, King Charles? Um, is it personal to him? Um, 
it seems that you know on an emotional level that pluto square his moon uh may be may be quite traumatic um you know i think that uh, prince charles scorpio is is a man who who does brood who does have strong feelings some of his feelings are not always very healthy and that pluto something really seems to be P pluto square his moon um something does seem to be bothering him uh i'm not quite sure not quite sure what um you see there's there's pluto in pluto in a Pluto in Aquarius um, it might be um, I don't know I suppose it might be all this stuff going on with um, with Prince Harry and uh, that sort of perennial problem with him and his wife um, could be that another way of looking at that Pluto square moon is to say oh well King Charles III is he's king of king of Great Britain whatever was he king of Great Britain and Northern Ireland or whatever um, so he's he's a king. He's the head of state of the UK. So, as head of state of the UK, when Pluto squares his moon, it may be that his country feels that square. It may not be about him personally. It may be about the country that he rules. Now, you could say, well, he's just a constitutional monarch. He doesn't have much power. But you know, from a symbolic point of view, he is perhaps the personification of the country and so um, in any national chart the moon is the people Pluto square the moon um, the British people are not happy um, something is happening under the surface um, Pluto square moon um, okay we're not going to necessarily see anything on Sunday but it's a situation that is developing um, and so we do have to be um, very aware of that. Now, another thing about um, King Charles, um, which I will try to talk about nearer the event, is um, there is a full moon, which is, um, just to get it, make sure I've got it absolutely right. Um, there's a full moon on actually January the 25th. So it's actually not this week, it's next week. Um, but while we're on the subject of Prince Charles, that full moon um, is at 515 Leo. So you can see that this full moon is, is you know, Prince Ch King Charles has got his ascendant at 524 Leo. So this full moon is right across his ascendant, ascendant, descendant. Um, I, I think that's big. I don't know what's going on between him and Camilla. I don't know what's going on between him and, uh, I don't know, his enemies. What enemies has he got? Um, but it's a moment of realisation for King Charles. I don't think it's going to be happy. It's a problem. Um, but again, it might be saying something about Britain, the country he rules, Britain's enemies. Um, Britain and its, and its allies. But... Uh, it's maybe a moment of reckoning for the United Kingdom and its king. So I think um, there are some big big things going on there. And when you throw in Pluto as well, Pluto square his moon, and then you've got, what, about less than a week later, he's got a full moon on his ascendant, descendant. Um, I think, yeah, I think King Charles does have to be careful, and his country has to be careful um, as well so let's uh let's look at uh, someone else so um we've got um um the race for the republican nomination um i think general view is that nothing can stop donald trump um uh but there are other people trying their best and one of them is nikki haley um I think uh I think there's about to be a primary in Iowa. Um I haven't I haven't been following this very well, but uh and I think she's kind of accepted that she's not gonna win because Donald's gonna win. Is that right? Yeah. Um so let's just have a quick look at uh, Nikki Haley's chart. Now, thing about Nikki Haley is we don't know 
uh, what time she's born. At least I don't know what time she's born. Obviously, she probably knows what time she's born, but I don't. Um, and she was born on January the 20th, 1972. So actually, Saturday is her birthday. So she's actually got, got a solar return on Saturday. Um, now, when she was born, uh, if we take noon, her son is at 29.45 Capricorn. That means I don't know whether she is a Capricorn or an Aquarius. Um, the son would have gone into Aquarius um, probably around 6 p.m., on the day she was born so if she was born before around 6 p.m she'd be a capricorn after 6 p.m she'd be um, an aquarius so all things being equal it, she's probably a capricorn um she's there's a, i suppose a 75 percent chance um that she is a capricorn um but uh her son is at that cuspal point remember Pluto is now moving through the last de degree of Capricorn, the end of the last degree of Capricorn, getting ready to move into Aquarius. So Pluto is going to hit her son. It, it really it is hitting her son right now. And um, so on Saturday, we have Sun-Pluto conjunction um, right at the end of Capricorn. Now, if her son is right at the end of Capricorn, she's going to feel that sun Pluto hitting her son. Um, it could be quite major for her. She um, she may start to understand the way things are. I think um, sun Pluto can be very much about power. Uh, she may have a sort of a realization about power. Uh, about what is possible and what is not possible. And in a moment of reflection, she just might see um, everything change. She may sort of realise that she's up against something that uh, she can't really do anything about. And I, I would, I would probably think that it's maybe not going to be too positive. I think it's going to be quite determined. I mean, Sun Pluto on, you know, Sun Pluto conjunction on her Capricorn, she is determined to be as successful as she can. But there's perhaps um, a sort of a grim realization uh, that there are certainly limits and that she's perhaps involved in something that's a bit overwhelming. Maybe, uh, Maybe, you know, this campaigning with the Iowa primary, there'll be a point where she's just too much for her. I mean, she's not going to say it's too much for her, but privately she may think, what is she doing here? <laughs> that that may be it. And it may just, she may just feel that the whole campaign um, is kind of infringing her boundaries. Um, you know, because, because I suppose if you're a politician, you are public property um to an extent and so uh with I, mean, I know she's an experienced politician she was governor of south carolina but there may be some point over the next week where she just thinks maybe just this isn't for her but of course she'll carry on as much as she can as far as she can um but uh yeah i i suppose it could be quite private and we probably won't actually know for sure how she was feeling um over the weekend um so yeah, so um, I th I think yes, that's that's for, that's for some Pluto conjunction and how I think um, it might uh, might impact her. Uh, and yeah, it is her birthday. I haven't looked at her. I haven't looked at her um, her solar return. Um, let's just do her solar return. Uh, We don't know precisely when her solar return is, but the sun. Is, this is the point where the sun returns to where it was when she was born, and set for her. Hold on, how is she? She's this would be her fifty. I think her fifty-second birthday, and so you can see on her solar return, you can see there is there is sun conjunct there is um, sun conjunct Pluto, um, possibly moon in Taurus trining that sun that sun pluto conjunction 
Uh, again, we don't know precisely when she was born. Okay, that is useful. Um, when you set up the solar return, you may start to see, you know, you do see that uh, there's certainly life in her yet. And Taurus is very grounded and uh, probably whatever she's feeling privately she will be able to sort of make the most of the situation but as i understand it she has got no chance of beating donald in the um in the iowa um in the iowa primary okay so that's nikki haley anyone else um peter buttigieg buttigieg uh he's the he's in uh, biden's cabinet isn't he um I wasn't his brief transport. Is he transport secretary? Um, so here's his chart. And you'll notice that he's born pretty much the same time, same, almost the same day as, um, as Nikki Haley, 10 years later. But he's, his birthday is January the 19th, 1982. Uh, in fact, we seem to have a time for him, 9 p.m. South Bend, Indiana. Um, so you can see there's his son at uh, 2941 um, Capricorn. He's got Sun square Pluto. And so this Sun conjunct Pluto over the weekend um, is going to have an impact on him. Um, it's in the fifth house. Um, uh, something to do with his creativity, something to do with his... Uh, Maybe something to do with his private life, uh, Sun conjunct Pluto, something he's certainly not going to want to talk about. Um, being very secretive, I would have said. Um, he doesn't want to talk about it, but uh, it's it's um, quite an impactful time for him. Um, but um, I don't know how, I don't know, I don't know much about him, um, but uh, he is hit by the Sun-Pluto conjunction. Um, so anyone else I want to talk about? Oh, well, um, how about the president of Argentina, uh, Javier Milay? Uh, Javier Milay, I don't know the pronunciation, but so Javier Milay, I think, was born on October the October the 22nd, 1970, um, at, I, I, I have 11.59 um, 11, 11 p.m., uh, so that is just before midnight, so he was born in Palermo in Argentina, not Palermo, Sicily, I think Palermo, I believe, is a suburb of Buenos Aires. Um, so you can see that he has got um, the sun at 29 Libra, um, so this Sun-Pluto conjunction is going to be square his uh, Sun in Libra. And so how is this going to manifest for him? So um, in terms of what's going on in Argentina, as I understand it, he's now president uh, and he... Um, is basically tearing everything up. You know, you see pictures of Javier Milai with a chainsaw. That's his kind of, his trademark almost. Um, taking a chainsaw to everything. Um, he's uh, pegging the peso to the dollar in preparation, preparation, I think, to getting rid of the national currency. Uh, I think he's planning on closing down Argentina's um, central bank, um, cutting, you know, cutting Argentina, you know, um, Cut, really cutting back on government spending and going for a sort of privatization campaign. And you can imagine doing all that kind of stuff. He's going to make a load of enemies. Um, that's obvious. Um, and so I'm thinking with this Sun-Pluto conjunction um, um, in his seventh house, actually quite close to his eighth house, you know, from a whole sign perspective, the moment... Um, the moment Pluto goes into Aquarius, it's in the whole sign. Um, it's in the whole sign eighth house. Um, so, um, if he's got Sun Pluto conjunction square his Sun, uh, I think that is resistance, um, enemies. A lot of powerful people in Argentina don't like what he's doing. 
and it's going to be a big battle. Um, Pluto square the sun is is just a, an immense power struggle um, is, is going to be going on as uh, just you know as as Pluto bounces back and forth between early early Aquarius and um, late Capricorn remembering later in the year uh, Pluto leaves does leave Aquarius for a bit goes back into Capricorn and those that movement is going to be impacting him and so I would have said for the whole year um, there's going to be major power struggles um, that uh, Javier Mila is going to be involved in and possibly his life may be in danger um, you know, I said a lot of powerful interests are um, don't like what he's doing um, um, I, I think it's a bit scary what he's doing as well I kind of you see echoes of um, uh, Pinochet in Chile, just this free market fascism that you that uh, we might be seeing, and this connection with America may not work well. Uh, bringing in the dollar, I think, could be problems there. Uh, but you will also notice that as Pluto goes into Aquarius, it makes a trine aspect to his Mars. So I think he's going to want to bring to bear an enormous amount of power to achieve his aims. Um, I mean, I suppose that's obvious. You would need a lot of power to do what um, Javier Mila is proposing. But will he get away with it? Um, I mean, my hunch with that Pluto square, his son, I think domestic opposition to, to what he's trying to do is going to be major and uh, he's involved in a big power struggle but I suppose that's obvious we perhaps didn't really need astrology to tell us that but I think astrology is um, is confirming that um, another person impacted by Pluto um going into Aquarius is um, is going to be um, Zelensky of course I, I won't spend long on Zelensky um, just to quickly point out that uh, um, Zelensky's Mars is at, is at 0 15 uh, Leo so Pluto is moving towards an opposition with his Mars um, uh, to, is moving towards the opposition of his Mars. You know, as with Mila, we've got big power struggles going on. Um, and the question is, is he going to be able to deal with it? Um, I I don't know. I think not. Um, things are now going from bad to worse for Zelensky. You know, the full moon on his... I think he's got a full moon on his birthday, uh, which is um, January the 25th. Um, and then he's got, you know, he's got Pluto opposition, his Mars, and in February he's going to have um, Mars when he's going to have uh, Mars opposition, his, well, where's Mars, Mars is about to, yeah, Mars is going to go into, a, Mars is going to go, go into Aquarius, yeah, it's, it's, it's bad, and yeah, Pluto. At the end of the week, Pluto going into 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 Aquarius opposition his Mars. That that's just more pressure uh, for Vladimir Vladimir Zelensky. And I I think it's clear signs that the fat lady is starting to sing on his career as president, and it really is time for him to leave. Um, one oh, the chart of the country. Uh, I did. I did mention that, didn't I? I did want to look at the chart of England. So England was born on um, December the twenty fifth, ten sixty six. Now this, you'll see, what it says December the thirty first. That's just a, um, a quirk of the program. A program um, I'm using likes likes to likes to have. Um, the date uh, it sort of switches calendars julian from gregorian whatever but that is those are the ch that is the chart for um britain if we take the coronation of william the first um on christmas day 1066 um so you can see that um at the time of the coronation um of william the first uh william the conqueror um venus was at uh, 2951 capricorn so this sun 
Pluto conjunction, um, the Sun Pluto conjunction um, over the weekend, but that's the weekend of Saturday, um, the 20th or 21st. The Sun Pluto conjunction is right on England's Venus. Um, you know, Venus might be um, Britain's allies, how Britain relates to the world at large. Um, you know, Britain's doing crazy stuff. I mean, it's not just supporting Ukraine, uh, kind of amazing. Why would Britain support that kind of government? Um, uh, we've just had news, haven't we, that Gonzalo Lira, the um, uh, he had he, uh, sort of he had a YouTube channel. He was in Ukraine. He was criticizing Ukrainian government that he's just he was he's been in he's been he was arrested and uh, we've just learned that he's dead. <laughs> um, uh, that didn't work out well, and the Ukrainians are pretty much responsible for that. So, and, uh, and the United States didn't lift a finger to help him. I want to look at Gonzalo Lira's chart um, maybe in a day or two's time. Um, but yeah, so Britain is involved in this crazy stuff. Is in Britain involved in you know bombing, bombing Yemen, the Houthis? Um, perhaps that's what that Venus is about. Um, Britain's role in the world, how Britain relates to 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 other countries, and the Sun Pluto conjunction may be a kind of an event which really emphasizes that. Britain is out of its depth, that some of its relationships around the world are starting to fray um, so, and, and have to be completely reconsidered. Um, so, yeah, its, it's, it's foreign policy is um, perhaps up the creek. Venus is also connected with money and states, state, states money, but, um, fine, you know, the, the, the country's money so Pluto might might uh, might be hitting that as well um, but I don't think that's happy I don't think that's comfortable um, you could also say that Venus represents um, um, women in Britain I'm not quite sure how that's going to work um, um, but uh, Venus Pluto I'm not I can, can't really work out the kind of scenario we might expect for Venus Pluto conjunct Venus representing um, women in British society. I don't know how you get a, a, a particular event that uh, would um, make this issue important. I don't know, um, but it's something to think about. Finally, I want to look at the horoscope of Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk not in relationship to Pluto, but in relationship to Uranus. So um, Donald Tusk, um, here's his chart. Uh, we seem to have a time of birth. He's born on April 22nd, 1957, just after midnight uh, in Dynsk in Poland. Um, so what I'm looking at is his Mercury. He's got Mercury at 1856 Taurus. Um, so what's happening is that Uranus is about to go stationary direct. It goes stationary direct um, right at the end of January at 1905 Taurus. So Mercury goes stationary direct right on Donald Tusk's Mercury. Um, and at the same time, we do get some trigger planets. So on the 17th, this week, on Wednesday, there's Mercury sesquiquadrate Uranus. And so Mercury is triggering that. And so I think this week, that Uranus as transit to, to Mercury is really starting to be impacted. And, and we know that there's stuff going on in Poland. Um, it, you, know, um, you know, Donald Tusk is... Um, uh, I mean, he's very much a sort of creature of the European Union. Um, he's um, sort of a globalist, neocon, all that kind of stuff. And he's trying to, you know, um, reverse things. You know, Poland has just had this government that, which is, uh, you know, very sort of nationalistic. 
the nation state wanting to sort of um, push back about, against some of the powers of um, the European Union, a government which is socially conservative. Anyway, it lost this, this election. He's prime minister, but uh, the opposition party, I think it's called Peace, they st- still, he, the pre- I think, I think the president um, so, um, is is uh, he's a is um, a member of peace. So there's a clash between Tusk and the president, and uh, Tusk has been trying to make big changes in broadcast in broadcast in uh, broadcasting and certain opposition members of po- uh, politicians. He's trying to trying to arrest them. Okay, he's trying to arrest them because I think he's a, a alleging corruption, which. Um, which the previous government had had given him immunity for, or something like that. But uh, he's got. We know he's got a big struggle on his hands, um, and I think the fact that Uranus is um, opposition his Mercury, and Mercury is triggering um, that that opposition. Um, really does suggest that uh, he is going to be challenged. Um, His intellect is going to be challenged. Um, His, um, you know, the way he thinks, the way he communicates, it's going to be really tough. And uh, with Uranus um, opposition, his Mercury, he might say things, think and think things, which, um, yeah, he might, uh, he might perhaps regret. So he does have to be careful what he says and his judgment uh, may not be um, 100% um, perfect. So, yeah, so that's uh, Donald Tusk. Oh, one thing, other thing, if you look at Donald Tusk's chart, he's got Mercury conjunct the South Node. Um, the South Node represents the line of least resistance. It's, uh, it's the past. Um, it's what we should be avoiding. Um, so there is some aspect of the way he's communicating um, the way even that he's planning policy um, that is fundamentally wrong. I mean, I mean wrong in a way, in a sense, for him. Um, He's just finding it too easy to do something. He has a particular way of thinking and behaving and speaking, which is inappropriate. And I think that this Uranus coming to a stationing um, very close to his Mercury is going to bring this all out. Um, And Mercury aspecting his... His Uranus, his Mercury sesqui quad, transiting Mercury sesqui quadrate, uh, his natal Mercury. Um, I think he would have to be careful. I think there's a danger that he makes a big mistake uh, this week um, because he he does what's easy rather than um, using a bit more thought. Uh, and the, the line of least resistance for him could could be very dangerous um, politically. Okay, uh, that's um, that's all I'm going to say about the astrology. Um, so what I want to do now is um, look at this week from a perspective of the I Ching. So, you know, I asked the question, what is this week? This week starting on January the 15th, 2024, going to be like for those watching this video. So if you don't want an I Ching reading, if you don't want to know about this week, indeed, if you don't want to be part of my forecast, then you can just um, turn the video off and whatever I say is gonna get, it doesn't, doesn't apply to you. Um, okay, so um, I'm probably not going to be saying very much in this section uh, because I got a single hexagram that does not move. Uh, This hexagram I got, which in fact I got, yes, I got when I was looking at, I think when I was looking at the weekend, I got this one. 28, preponderance of the great, and it is locked. That means it doesn't move to another hexagram. Um, every single line is static. Um, that means that this week is probably going to feel a bit stuck. Uh, if you've been planning on making big changes this week, um, maybe not. Uh, it may just might might not happen. Um, you're going to try to create change, I'm sure. 
you're going to try to live up to your responsibilities but yeah it's going to be it's going to be hard work and you might not feel there's just there's just just not enough movement and so that that could that could be a problem but still preponderance of the great um it is a difficult hexagram um you know and you can see it by by looking at it by looking at that hexagram uh, you've got those four unbroken lines in the middle. That's like a huge weight. The top and the bottom, you've got these small handles. It's, it's, a, it's a weight that's really difficult to pick up. Um, and uh, it represents, you know, something we're involved in, uh, a challenge, a problem we're trying to solve. And we just cannot, we just cannot make progress with it. Um, but, you know, we do have this inner impulse, uh, to really make something happen. And that relates to the nuclear hexagram. So every hexagram in the I Ching has a nuclear hexagram. So what a nuclear hexagram is, is the hexagram when you knock off the top and the bottom lines. So if you knock off the top and the bottom lines, what are the top three lines? They are all unbroken. If you, if you, and the, what are the bottom three lines? They're all unbroken. So in fact, the nuclear hexagram is actually this. It's the creative. Um, so that's a kind of the force behind the whole thing. We are trying to be creative. We're trying to make something happen. We're trying to be the spark to move things, to really move things on. That's, that's what's keeping us going. Um, and that's great. But in practice, um, when we actually try to use this spark, when we try to use this primal energy, we find that we just can't, we just can't get things moving. And that is, um, that's a real problem. And so, yeah, so we are stuck with um, preponderance of the great and we just have to work out how best to deal with it. I don't think it's a situation where we can just give up. I was saying this, this, this load is... Um, too much for us uh it may not even be a situation where we can just stand still because if we stand still the load just becomes heavier and heavier and we might just be be destroyed by the load we just need to keep moving and it's hard work but if we keep moving um we can perhaps make some kind of progress um, so that's the that's the general situation um, that we're in. Now, as far as um, as far as money is concerned, um, I, I think I think we're going to be very aware of um, our financial responsibilities. Um, we understand. We this week we're going to see all the stuff we have to spend money on. And at the same time, we know what our income is. We know what we've got in the bank. And it just might feel a bit difficult to sort of balance it all out. Um, you, know, we, you know, we feel that um, what we need to do is that we need to sort our finances out, that we need to make sure that uh, income and expenditure are balanced and... Uh, but in practice, it is actually very, very difficult to um, take control um, of our finances. Um, and there may be one particular thing we're, in, we're engaged with um, in terms of money. We're engaged with it, and it's, it's just really hard. Um, it, w you know, are we really making progress? Um, I mean, perhaps if you're in the United States, you're starting to think about tax, you know, it's tax season just around the corner. Um, that may be part of it. Um, but it is it is tough. And we but we so want to make progress. We so want to sort the thing out. But uh, um, it's not that we can't make progress. It's just that it's going to be really difficult and we have to keep moving and we um, must not um, we must not give up because there, you know there is a way um, to make the financial changes we're looking for. Um, 
it's just going to be tough. And I mean, I think matters are perhaps not going to be helped um, by the attitude of other people. So if anyone, if there are other people involved in our financial decision making, um, having to get their permission, getting getting them to understand what's going on, that's going to be hard work as well. Um, but as far as this week is concerned, it's not the week you're going to sort things out. It's going to, you know, maybe you can start to understand what's going on. You can start to create a little bit of momentum. It's the kind of momentum you have when you've got a sort of a big weight and you're going downhill and, yeah, you're sort of getting there, but it still hurts. Um, so... Uh, that's money. Uh, I'm sorry I can't be more optimistic, um, but uh, you wouldn't have been given this this issue, this problem, if you didn't have some way of dealing with it. Then we have uh, career. I mean, it's kind of a similar picture. So if you are working, um, if you're in a job, um, it is difficult. Um, the job that you're doing doesn't seem to be a bundle of laughs. Um, you're you're not convinced that you can make progress, um, and maybe you feel that you've been given too much responsibility, or perhaps other people just aren't helping you. Um, and you know this responsibility, the things you're having to do at work, are just yeah. I think in some respects they're too much for you. Uh, does that mean you give up? No. Uh, does that mean that you uh, tell people there's a problem? Well, not necessarily. Um, you have to keep going. So what does it take to keep going? Well, I suppose it may mean you just have to give it more time. Um, perhaps if you have to go beyond your, I don't know, your nine to five or whatever, it's just going to be hard. It's going to be exhausting. Um and uh, you know, if you're if you have your own business, if you're setting up a business, uh, wow, well, yeah, that is really tough. Um, you certainly you if you're yeah if you're self-employed, you're in your own business. You certainly have the impulse uh, to make things happen because the, the nuclear hexagram here is is the creative. Yeah, you are a very creative person. You've got this blast of creativity and then you you just got this big burden to deal with to get it to get it out to make things happen um and that's uh that's hard work uh it's it's um it's really difficult um and uh, you know i suppose me i mean <laughs> Look at me. I'm trying. I'm just trying to set up this YouTube channel. Um, what am I trying to do with this YouTube channel? Um, what does this say about my YouTube channel? Preponderance of a great. Yeah, it's really hard, isn't it? Um, you just keep pushing out these videos. You know, I have to keep moving. I have to keep pushing out these videos. Um, and it's really difficult. And I perhaps sometimes don't feel I'm getting making much traction but yeah ponderance of a great got to keep going yeah the nuclear hexagram is the creative i want to you know i have the creative spark i think maybe maybe you don't believe me but uh, uh so that's that's how it might you know how how it sort of um how it perhaps relates to me um and so for me it's perhaps saying it's going to be a difficult week because i it's this, this forecast is for me as well as you um and I'm not going to make much progress, um, but it's only a week. So, yeah, just just bear in mind, just keep keep moving. So if you're involved in something, if you're involved in some business enterprise, uh, you've got to keep going with it. You can't give up. It's certainly not a time to give up. Um, and, you know, it's just keep moving. Um, and, you know, you will make progress. But it just might be very slow progress. What you mustn't do is just stop. Because if you stop, the weight just gets heavier and heavier and heavier. And then you've lost it. Um, so that's perhaps um, what, what you need to do. And finally, um, there's relationships. Um, 
preponderance of a great um, uh, is not it's not really saying that uh, relationships are going to be great. Um, I think if you're in a relationship, it is hard work. Um, the other person probably isn't very supportive, um, at least over the next week. Remember, it's a short term. It's just a week. Um, but the other person is not very supportive. Whether you know, Whatever the nature of a relationship, um, business partnership, a marriage, uh, someone you only met yesterday whatever it is you're not going to make you're not going to make much progress and i don't think the other person is going to be particularly helpful um maybe they'll be engaged with some something else but you'll just find you'll have to do all the organizing all the work everything and uh you might just want to just give up on the whole thing um and that's something you can do um this is relationships um whatever all's fair in love and war if that's what you want to do go do it um um but movement is important um you have to engage with the problem and you can't just stay with the problem you know just do nothing uh because uh, that is a recipe for complete misery just staying still holding this burden and the burden just drags you down now you've got to keep moving um and that movement might be struggling to make the relationship work. Uh, okay, first week, this week, I don't think you'll make much progress. But next week, the week after, something different. Or that movement might be taking steps to rid yourself of this relationship. That's another type of movement. Um, you know, you might take the view that a relationship you're in is just too much work. It's just exhausting you. Um and if that's the case, and you know you you feel that you really can't can't deal with it anymore, then the movement is is saying thank you and goodbye. That's one possibility. Um, you know, particularly if it's a new relationship. But uh, if it's if it's an, a long-standing relationship, then you've got to somehow keep going, trying to make things get you know make things better. And uh, short term. You're not probably going to feel that you're wasting your time, but you are making progress. It's slowly, um, but uh, surely. Okay, that's the I Ching. You know, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry I'm not more positive, but uh, that's the way it goes. Uh, you can't have a positive week every week. Um, the I Ching is talking about a challenge, and the I Ching is saying, telling you what to do. The I Ching is saying, whatever the issue is that you're faced with this week, got to keep moving. Um, standing still is not an option um and perhaps you've you know you've got to be patient and you shouldn't expect um immediate results okay uh thank you thank you for uh listening um despite everything uh i hope you have a great week um and uh if you've enjoyed the video maybe you didn't enjoy the video but if you found the video useful then um then I'd be grateful if you liked it. And yeah, if you're not subscribed and and you found the video useful, possibly not enjoyable, but uh, um, if you found it useful, then yes, I'd be grateful if you were to subscribe. Um, if you want to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. Thank you for listening again. And uh, I will talk to you again very soon.